Chicago will be the opponent for Case next week in the Windy City. We are ready for action here in the third quarter. Case leading it by a score of 21 to 7 here at Case Field. Sam Coffey ready to approach the football. He puts the foot in it. Low line drive kick will be taken back at the 12 yard line. Brought back by the Scots across the 25, 30, 35, and out of bounds. Carrying it back was Gerard Ogletree Crawford. And he gets out of bounds near the 36 yard line. And that's where the Fighting Scots will take over behind their fine freshman quarterback, Richard Barnes, out of Painesville Harvey High School. They're playing without Cameron Daniels, their starting tight end who caught five passes in the first half before leaving with an injury. Underway in the third quarter, first play from scrimmage, little screen pass out to Robert Flagg, their tight end. He is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, yep. Give James Wodick a credit on that one, Mike. He forced the play back to the middle. He took away the outside edge. He took away the sideline. Flagg had to cut it back to the middle, and he ran into a bunch of blue shirts, and it cost him a couple of yards even on the completion. Minus two on the play, second down and 12 from the 34-yard line. Richard Barnes from the shotgun. They will hand it to Flagg, tries to make his way out on the outside edge, left side. He is cut down by Dale English before he can turn it back upfield. He got five out to the 39. Now it's third and long, and this is Worcester struggled all day, just two of seven on third down. Case was five of nine on third down plays in the first half, but as Ed alluded to, two of seven for the Fighting Scots. Third down and eight from the 38-yard line. Barnes will have four receivers in the game, three on the right side. Working from the shotgun, takes the snap. He'll drop back to throw it, looks over the middle of the field. Man is open. It's caught for a first down. Jordan McIntyre on the receiving end all the way out to the 49-yard line. It's a pickup of 11. Well, Case was playing zone in the middle, and McIntyre found a spot between Adams and Sasala and had just enough to get the first down. 21-7 Case, third quarter action. First and 10 from the Worcester 49. Spartans on defense right now, leading it by 14. Barnes, empty backfield in the shotgun, looks downfield, time to throw, good protection, throws it over the middle. It's almost intercepted by Jacob Adams, who had that one go right through his hands. Well, and then he tipped it enough as it went through his hands and deflected into the secondary. Matt Davis was near the football when it landed. Lucas Sasala also there for Case. So Case will force a second and 10. After the incompleted pass, again, three receivers on the left side. Stouffer and McIntyre in the slot. They will snap it to Barnes. He will keep it and will have nowhere to run with it. He is gang tackled back at the midfield stripe. Might have gained a yard. It'll be another third and long for Worcester as the football is resting on the 50-yard line. Third down and nine for the Fighting Scots with 12.48 to go here in the third quarter. Barnes hands on hips, looking over at the sideline. And the offensive coordinator is Kyle Rooker. Barnes drops back near his own 40-yard line, steps up in the pocket, gets rid of the football. It's caught by Flag for a first down. He gets away and is knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Well, Barnes's legs are saving the Scots as he was able to step up in the pocket, avoid the rush by an extra second, second and a half, and with that was able to find Flag just standing on the sideline waiting as an outlet receiver. Case defensive secondary doing a nice job, but eventually it's going to break down. Barnes will flip it backwards to Flag. He will turn it upfield, gets to the 40, and is tripped up right there. Zach Haas there. Wodica might have been held on that play. Well, and Murdoch could have got called for another push in the back as well. The second or third time we've seen that lateral pass to get the running back in motion in space. And the wide receiver has to make that block, has to cut down that corner. And Murdoch's letting him get inside and then pushing in the back. 
They lost a yard on the play. Now Barnes wants to throw it, looking downfield. Lots of protection, directing traffic, still on his feet, looking downfield, fires it out. It's caught by McIntyre at the 35-yard line. They'll um, pick up six. After all of that, Barnes missed a wide open. Joe Stoffer who had broken off his defender at the 20-yard line and was standing alone at the 10-yard line. Nobody within about 10 or 15 yards of him. And Barnes missed him, and Case got away with one. As it is, it's third down and six now for the Fighting Scots. They'll bring in their backup tailback, Brendan Taylor. He's to the right of Barnes in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, wants to get rid of it quickly, threads the needle. It's caught out there by Reddick for a first down. Another third down conversion for the Fighting Scots. They that's, keep the drive alive. That's two in this possession, two in the first four minutes of the second half. They only had two in the entire first half. They're moving the football down the field now at the 28-yard line of the Spartans. Two receivers on the left, two on the right. They keep Taylor in the game with Barnes in the backfield. Barnes will keep it, tries to turn the outside corner. Now he's in trouble, and he'll be hit and knocked down at about the 26-yard line. Pickup of maybe two on first down, so a second down and eight for the Fighting Scots. 10-20 to go, third quarter, 21-7 case. Well, Dale English is here on the near sideline, Dave, kneeling down behind the, the bench area. Looked like he was stretching out maybe a cramp, got a drink of water, and now heads back, look to go back in the football game. Ten minutes exactly to go here in the third. Barnes back to throw in the shotgun over the middle of the field. The pass is deflected. It might have been Susala, maybe Davis, who got a hand up and deflected that pass away from the intended target, Mike Reddick. Now Davis was on coverage, and Susala came from his middle linebacker position. I think he's the one that actually got the hand on the ball and deflected it. 9.53 to go in the third quarter. Clock stops with the incompleted pass. And now Worcester with another third down. This time it's third and eight. They've converted on three third down plays in this drive. Three receivers on the right side. The nearest receiver on the right is Joe Stauffer in the slot. Now back to throw. Barnes guns it upfield. Incomplete looking for Kyle Murdoch. Nice defensive coverage by Kerry Dieter on the corner. And it's fourth down and eight. Well, this is a 44-yard field goal if they were to try it here with the win. i got to believe that Worcester's going to go for it. Barnes is still out there as well as the regular offensive unit. Stauffer and Murdoch will split out wide to the right along with Jordan McIntyre. They keep Reddick on the far left side by himself. Flag is in the backfield with Richard Barnes who calls out the play. They have eight left on the play clock. He takes the snap, fourth down and eight from the 26, fires it out to Reddick, it's caught for a first down. Just outside the 15, he's down on the 17-yard line, oh, and it's a first down as they pick up nine, they needed eight. It was thrown to a spot, and that was the only place that Barnes was going to go with it. Reddick ran, Kerry Dieter off the play, stopped, turned around, came back for the football, and it was right there. Ball was thrown on the mark. It was thrown to a specific spot. They had one chance to complete that pass, and they did. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. Here's Flag. tries to turn the corner. Flag comes out from the official as Flag, the person, is tackled near the 20-yard line. Lost about three on the play, but we'll see what the penalty is all about. A flag was thrown while Flag was carrying the football. Officials huddling. It's against Worcester. Well, I'm not sure what that signal meant. I believe it was tripping against Worcester. It looked as if he made the signal that a penalty was going to be declined, but... Well, if Case declines it, it'd be second and 13. If they accept it, it'll be first and 20. So Debs is going to opt to take the penalty. Or first and 17. No, first and 20. They will mark the football back to the 27-yard line. So it should be 
first down and 20 to go from the 27 yard line. They can get a first down just inside the eight yard line. Barnes will keep it, turns it up over the left side, down the sideline now inside the 20, hit late by Matt Davis and more flags come out. He got out of bounds and Davis was still driving him out. It'll be a penalty against Case at the end of that play. He got inside the 20 at the 18. And that'll be an automatic first down. A late hit out of bounds on Matt Davis. First down for Worcester. They'll mark it down at the nine yard line. Well, this is the opening drive of the second half. We're at nine minutes and counting. So Worcester has had the ball for six minutes here to open the second half. They have converted three third downs, one fourth down, and now they have a first down on a penalty, and they are inside the 10. First and goal from the nine-yard line for Richard Barnes. He drops back to throw, looking toward the end zone, guns it that way, incomplete. He was looking for Kyle Murdoch, and a late flag comes out. From across the field. Again, the back judge 10 yards away, no call. The field judge about 15 yards away, no call. But the side judge 40 yards away is going to throw the flag on the play. Again, he saw something that indicated that it could be interference, but it's very odd that an official 40 yards from the play can see that, but an official's on top of the play miss it. The ball will be marked at the two-yard line. 8.37 to go third quarter. First and goal for Worcester from the two. Case leading it by a score of 21 to 7. Worcester trying to punch it in and pulled it within one touchdown. Barnes wants to run it. Now he'll throw it. Man is wide open. It's Jordan McIntyre, and he missed the football. <laughs> Barnes wanted to run it, stopped, and gave it an old jump pass. Looked like Tim Tebow throwing the football. And it went right through McIntyre's hands about eight yards deep in the end zone. Jordan McIntyre wondering how in the world he missed a touchdown there. McIntyre, a sophomore out of Steubenville. 21-7 Case, eight and a half minutes to play. Third quarter action here at Case Field. Second down and two. Barnes will run it this time straight up the middle. He's close. No signal yet. He didn't get there. Spartans drove him back as he got to the one. The Worcester players saying that he got in. The officials did not make a signal, and it's marked inside the one. Here comes Colin Dessen in. He'll be the fifth defensive lineman for the Spartans on this short yardage play. Dessens comes in. Dan Calabrese comes out. Third down and one for the Fighting Scots from inside the one. Third and goal. Barnes will give it to Flag. He is hit and driven back. And Colin Dessens with the penetration. Rich Doolin also in there and just stood him up and forced him back. Yeah, Dessens had the big play there as he knocked flag backwards. And now the football will be marked at the two on fourth down. Fourth and goal from the two-yard line for the Fighting Scots. They have had the ball the entire third quarter. We have 7.20 to play in the third quarter. Case leading it by two touchdowns. The crowd wants to see another big stop and a whistle and a timeout. It has to be on the Worcester end. Worcester will take a timeout. It will be their first timeout of the second half. Yeah, the play clock was down to five when Barnes finally stepped away from the line and started calling the signals. So the Scots had to call timeout. Well, a very interesting drive to say the least. Three third down conversions. Uh, am I mistaking now? Two fourth down conversions, I believe. And they had a penalty for a first down called against Case. And now they're looking at a fourth and goal from the two yard line. And they will decide what they want to do here as Mike Schmitz and company will decide what route they want to take here. Fighting Scots. Russ Palm is three of eight kicking field goals this year with a long of 37. 
Obviously, this would be a very short field goal if they want to get points on the board. But it looks like the main offensive unit will stay out, and they will go for it at fourth and two. Well, I, I expect them to use the athleticism of Barnes, roll to his right, and look for something. Here he goes. He cuts it back up the middle. He is in. Touchdown. Faked the option pitch to flag, and then cut it back up the middle and dove in for a touchdown. Two-yard run for Barnes, the quarterback. Barnes on the season, his third rushing touchdown for the Fighting Scots. And with the PAT coming up, they could pull to within seven. Russ Palm will try the extra point. Left-footed kicker, Joe Stauffer is the holder. The long snapper is Dan Terhune. Here is the hold, here is the kick. It is up, and it is good. 7-11 to go in the third quarter. 21 to 14. Case's lead is seven, and the Spartans will prepare to get the ball back for the first time in the second half. Now officially seven minutes and 49 seconds on the drive for the Scots. Are they going to say that was 10 plays or 18 plays, Dave? We'll get the official... Uh, they got 18 plays, 64 yards, 7 minutes, 42 seconds on the drive. They're going to take the 8 seconds away for the return. And it's 21-14. I mean, the worst thing the case offense can do right now is a three and out, Dave. They need a couple of first downs, let that defense sit, regroup, get their breath. Well, the Scots making some big plays. On that uh, drive, two of three today on fourth down. They converted two fourth down plays on that drive, including the touchdown. Here is the kick, sideways kick, end over end. It goes to the 15 to Metalsitz, out to the 25, 30. Still on his feet, out to the 35-yard line. And that's where Case will take over. Brian Metal sits with the return for the Spartans, and we have 7.04 to go here in the third quarter at Case Field today at the Village of 115. Beautiful Case Field surrounded by the red brick dormitories of Case Western Reserve University. Good crowd on hand today watching the Fighting Scots and the Spartans battle for the Baird Brothers Trophy. Very overcast. The lights continue to be on here at Case Field. Baum takes the snap in the shotgun. They'll give it to Derek Bush. Turns it back upfield. 40-45 out to the 47-yard line. First down run. I like the hard running from Derek Bush. He turned the corner and immediately got upfield. As soon as he saw that slot, just took it right away. And Case pushes it out near midfield. Out to the 47-yard line for Derek Bush. Bush's ninth carry of the day. 12-yard pickup. He now has 44 yards. 6.45 to play third quarter. They will give it to Bush again. Running behind, looking for some blocking. Gets a yard or two before he is finally cut down by the Finding Scots. Eric Keyes was in there defensively. Among others for the Scots. Football is still at the 47. Tony Opperman comes up limping a little bit. Opperman will stay in the game. It looked like Jake Adams wanted to run in and replace him. Instead, Opperman will stay in the football game. Still shaking off that left ankle. Opperman, the left guard, plays beside Marcus Kluzinski. Now Baum to throw it. Will wing it out to nicely in the flat across midfield. Slides down and makes the catch at the 48-yard line. A pickup of five. And Opperman is done. He's got to come out. Tony Opperman limping noticeably as he comes off the field. So Jake Adams, the freshman, takes over. Adams, six foot two, 250. They'll take a look at Opperman over on the sideline. He's getting over to the trainer's table right now, looking at his left ankle. Baum on third down and five from the Worcester 48. They try to go to Homick. On the screen pass, and it's knocked down, incomplete. Dan Terhune, the junior defensive tackle, 
out of Chagrin Falls. Knocks that one down. A big defensive play there for the Scots. And the ball right at midfield. It should be at the 48-yard line. line. Exactly. The official, they've moved the chains back and the yard marker to midfield. I don't know how the Spartans lost two yards on an incompleted pass. That is a major mistake. Cost the Spartans two yards. Here's the punt from Vassal. Nice kick. Fair catch called for at the 16-yard line, taken in by the Scots Taylor Trout. So no return on the kick from midfield. And that goes back to what we were talking earlier about is that you can accept the officials' calls, but when you really can't find a consistency in the crew and errors like that and just simply spotting the football, you begin to then question every call, not just the, the basics of, of down distance and yardage. Spartan sat at third and five at the 48-yard line, and after an incompleted pass, the football was placed at midfield. 5.13 to go. Scots have the ball back. Spartans failed to score. They still lead it 21 to 14. They'll give it to Flag. Cuts it back upfield. Gets to the 20-yard line. Knocked down. Nice play by Case defensive lineman Michael Harris, who came over and wiped out Flag, who got out to the 21-yard line. A pickup of three. Second down and seven. Worcester working in their own territory right now, but trying to add a second touchdown here in the third quarter after a long drive resulted in a score on their last possession. Three receivers on the left, Reddick on the right. They will flip it out to Jordan McIntyre, makes the catch, turns it upfield, gets hit before he hits the 25. Harris was in there again. He ran right into the nine and three of Michael Harris, and Harris just Put him down as soon as they made contact. Richard Doolin got in there as well. Third down and five. Football marked at the 23-yard line of the Scots. Barnes takes the snap in the shotgun, looks to get rid of it, flushed out of the pocket, reverses direction, heads back to the far side of the field, fires the football. It's complete to McIntyre, who was down near the turf to pick that one off. And it's good for the first down, right at the first down marker. Maybe not. The spot might not be favorable. Now, now they, they are going to say it's a first down. They have moved the chains. They got out to the 28-yard line, so they got the five yards they needed exactly. First down and 10. 3.41 to go, third quarter. Scott's dominating time of possession here in the third. Flag straight up the middle. Robert Flagg, what a great name for a football player. <laughs> Out across the 30 to the 31-yard line, a pickup of three. Yeah, Case has had the football day for just two minutes and six seconds here in the third quarter. And we only have just over three minutes left. So nearly 10 minutes of possession for the Worcester Scots here in the third quarter. 3-10 and counting. Barnes looking over to the sideline. They might be checking off here. Three receivers on the right side. Split out wide right is Zach Wiedrich. One-on-one -on -one with Wodica. They'll go to Wiedrich at the 30. Turns it upfield. Hit from behind and knocked down by Dale. Let's see, who was that who came in for a case? It looked like Ferramonte came in from behind and wiped out Wiedrich yeah, as he got to the 35. And Jake Adams was there, as was Wodica. Third down and three. These are the opportunities or situations where the case defense this season has been able to get off the field and give the offense a short field. Here in the second half against Worcester, they have not been able to stop the Worcester Scots on third down. Well, try right now. Third down and three. Barnes looking to get rid of it. Now the coverage breaks down. He runs for it, dives for the 40-yard line. And gets a favorable spot out towards the 40. He bounced towards the 40. He was down near the 38. It'll be a first down as he got to the 40-yard line for a five-yard pickup. Jake Adams made the stop for Case. And it's first and 10 as they convert on third down again. Snap goes back to Barnes. He'll keep it as he fakes it to flag, runs straight up the middle, gets six more, 
And again, the Spartans come flying at him. Zach Haas, Lucas Sasala in there. Joe, Joe St or is that Stauffer or McIntyre that's down on the far side? Looks of the field. like that's Jordan McIntyre is injured, and he is hurting over near the 41-yard line, well away from where the play occurred. But now he hops up and appears to be okay as he walks off under his own power, so it appears to be only momentary agonizing pain. Uh, Worcester is fighting through the injury to Cameron Daniels, and Daniels is on the sideline. Dave, he's in street clothes on crutches. Yeah, yeah he was injured in the first half on a very awkward-looking tackle, and it does not appear to be a good prognosis for Cameron Daniels, the starting tight end for Worcester. McIntyre over walking off whatever happened. Barnes takes the snap and the shotgun. Second down, they go to flag. He has the first down and more. Breaks into Case territory, straight up the middle. He's finally dragged down at the 42-yard line. A pickup of 11. Well, and you're going to see the substitutions coming for Case. Here's three in, three out. As Desson comes to the sideline, as does Sasala. Got to get a breather. They've been on the field for what's going to be 13 to the 15 minutes of the third quarter. Tim Lotz finally recorded the tackle on flag after he ran for 11. First and 10 from the 42. Under a minute to play third quarter. Here's the snap to Barnes. They go to Taylor. Taylor cuts it over the left tackle. Gets across the 40. Down to the 37-yard line. Five more. 40 seconds left. The clock continues to move. And 30 on the play clock. So this will probably be the final play of the third quarter. It has been all Worcester in the third quarter. They have had five third down conversions here in the third quarter, two fourth down conversions. Second and five from the Case 37-yard line, 21-14. Case on top by one. Barnes looks to get it off. Does so with the play clock at one. Now he'll fire it out in the flat. It's caught by Reddick. He is quickly tackled at the line of scrimmage at the 37, and that's the end of the third quarter. They'll change sides. Worcester will have the ball third down and five when we start the fourth quarter. 21 to 14, Case leading the College of Worcester Fighting Scots. The all important fourth quarter is coming up after these messages on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Spartans broadcasters bringing you the action from Case Field today. Spartans will be on the road next Saturday at the University of Chicago. That will be a 1 o'clock Eastern time start, 12 o'clock Central. That will be the final road game of the regular season. Key stat here, Dave, in the third quarter, Case had the ball for just 1 minute 58 seconds, ran four plays. Worcester ran 28 offensive plays. Well, here's the 29th of the second half. Barnes trying to keep it. Spartans wrap him up back near the 40, but he shakes a tackler and gets out close to the 44-yard line. But it'll still be a fourth down coming up for Worcester. They're in case territory, and we'll see what Mike Schmitz elects to do. Fourth down and four from the 36-yard line. Barnes got away from one man to avoid a big loss, but ended up only gaining one on the play. They will punt this one away. Dana O'Berry to punt it away. Watch for the possible fake. O'Berry standing at midfield. He will kick this one away and angles near the sideline. 
It will bounce inside the five, and it'll be down at the one-yard line. What a bounce for Oberry. And Gerard Ogletree Crawford was waiting on the hop, and he caught it inside the one, and Case has a 99-yard field ahead. Now they got that straight-up hop. Ball hit at about the four-yard line, and ordinarily on that kind of low-line drive kick, Dave, it's going to hit and skip. It hit and went straight up in the air, and Crawford corralled it inside the one. So here come the Spartans, Joey Bohm and company. Zach Homick comes out. Sean Nicely will line up at a wide receiver spot. So will Brian Webster. Well, since the three-minute mark of the second quarter, when they scored their touchdown, they've run seven offensive plays. Back to throw Baum in his own end zone. They go to Homick, makes the catch out near the nine, stays on his feet. Now he's knocked out of bounds at the 10. So Case comes out, gets a quick nine-yard pickup to Zach Homick to get a little bit of breathing room away from their own end zone. Last year at Papp Stadium in Worcester in a similar situation, Case's Dan Whalen hit Tim Cowdrick for a 94-yard touchdown pass. Back to hand it off, Baum goes up the middle to Bill Deitman and pounds his way out near the 15-yard line, running behind Matt Yanosko there and Deitman gets five. And a first down, more important, so Case could continue to hold possession of the ball and wind that clock. 13, 38 to go in the fourth quarter. Case leading it by a score of 21 to 14 here at Case Field today. Jake Abbott still in the ball game at left guard. Tony Opperman is out. He's on the near sideline icing his ankle. At first, uh, Opperman did put his shoe back on and was lacing it up, but after testing it again, it came back off. Deitman carrying it around the left side, cannot turn it upfield, and this will go for a loss here. I don't believe he got back to the line of scrimmage. Dan Terhune was in there defensively. And also Chris Ackerman got in there defensively for Worcester to help record the tackle. He lost a yard. The football marked at the 14. Second down, 11 for the Spartans. Joey Baum from the shotgun. Rolls quickly to his right, looks back left, goes up top, throws it way over the head of Bryce Coleman, the tight end, who had ranged out about the 35-yard line. Third down and 11 coming up for Case. Well, Coleman broke that off into the inside, and Baum threw it to the outside like it was a fly pattern. Coleman thought it was some kind of skinny post, so not on the same page, and it cost Case an incompletion and a down. Now Case will need a big third down play here at their own 14. It is third and 11. Three receivers on the right side. Homick is closest to the line in a slot position. Now a whistle. Flag comes out. The illegal procedure call. And it will go against Case. This will mark off five more and make it a little tougher. Third down and 16. The football is now on the Case nine-yard line. And right now, Ed, you're looking at uh, the field tipping a little bit. If Case cannot convert here and they have to punt from their own end zone, Worcester will definitely have good field position. And all started with a great punt by Worcester down at the one-yard line. Baum from the shotgun. Third down, 16. Baum goes to the sideline looking for metal sits. This one is overthrown and incomplete. Metal sits the intended target. Fourth down, 16 from the case nine. And Dan Vassa will come in and try to get a kick away out of his own end zone and hope for a nice bounce. Well, we got an update from Pittsburgh. Carnegie Mellon and number seven ranked Wittenberg tied at 21 with seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Rochester did come back. They beat the Worcester Poly Institute 16 to 15 with a late touchdown. Vassal waiting inside the goalkeeper's box. Here is the kick. A nice punt. Uh, and now Vassal is knocked down. You're going to get a penalty on Worcester. The Kick lands or is caught at the 50-yard line, but Vassal was hit. It'll be a first down for Case. 
Well, Case will keep the ball. Even being hit, Vassal with a punt that went 50 yards in the air. Man, it was caught on the midfield stripe by Taylor Trout, but that one came out of the end zone, so you're probably looking at a 55-yard punt. Well, he hit it, and the minute he hit it, it's it's like you know you hear that sound when a ball hits a bat or you hit a, a drive, you can just you can just hear it, and it was night just that silence off his foot almost, and Case will keep possession and they get out of the shadows of their own goalpost. First and ten from the 24-yard line after they mark off 15 yards, Derek Bush gets it across the 25-yard line. And picks up a couple. Second down coming up for Case as Bush runs for two. And boy, you can bet in the Worcester coaching box and on the sideline, they're just kicking themselves. No pun intended. After the roughing the kicker call. They would have had the ball at midfield or better. Bomb to throw it. Goes to Webster out in the flat. Makes the catch across the 30-yard line. Out near the first down marker, but a little bit short. Third down and one coming up for Case. The football marked at the 38. Well, third and one gives them a lot of options. Third down and one still in their own territory at the 33-yard line. I believe I said the 38. 33-yard line, the line of scrimmage for the Spartans. Baum in the shotgun. Gets rid of it to Webster again. Catches it for the first down. And this time he is at the 38. Five-yard pickup and a first down. Well, that's more than important. Again, move the chain. Keep the clock moving. Let your defense rest on the sideline. All of them important factors for Case down the stretch. Baum will hand the football. They go to Deitman, who had checked in. And Deitman is tripped up. That was actually Bush. Derek yeah. Bush gets the call again, tripped up. He might have lost a yard on that play. Second down coming up for Case. Clavillo there for the tackle for the Scots. Spartans will line up again on offense. Webster out wide left. Coleman is in at tight end on the left side of the line. They have Colin Repko and Zach Homick on the right. Repco is in the slot. Bush stays in the game at running back. Baum looks to throw it. Now he will step up in the pocket. Fires for Homick. Makes the catch across midfield all the way down at the 35-yard line. Step back in front of Taylor Trout and made that catch. And stays in bounds at the 34-yard line. So as soon as they spot the, the chains, again, the clock will run. Ten minutes and counting or so. And it's imperative for the Spartans, Dave, to get some points out of this drive now. You've driven inside the 35-yard line. You get another 10, 12 yards. You can let Casey, you can let him try coffee, try a field goal, maybe go up by 10 points with about eight minutes to go in the game. That one goes for 29 yards from Baum to Homick, and now Baum in trouble, gets rid of the football and throws it out of bounds before he is absolutely eaten alive by Chris Ackerman who came through completely untouched and was chasing Joey Baum. Now, I think that was a broken play. Either the backs went the wrong way or Baum did. And Baum, again, a cool, calm, collected senior, realized he was outside the tackle box, outside the hash marks, got the ball past the line of scrimmage and out of bounds for an incompletion rather than taking a 7 or 8, maybe 10-yard sack. Second down and 10 from the Worcester 34-yard line. Homick is alone on the left side against Taylor Trout one-on-one. -on -one. They will go to Homick, makes the catch. 30, 29, stays on his feet to the 25 and goes down right there, just shy of the first down. It's a nine-yard pickup. Now, a nice move will get away from Trout, picked up four more yards, didn't try to do too much, and I like Homick getting down on the ground like that. No chance of the ball getting kicked away, a fumble, loss of possession. So for Case, third and one again. They're in a very manageable situation. Trout stays on Homick, who lines up wide right. Webster wide left. Nicely in a slot on the right side. You've got Coleman at tight end on the right side of the line and Bush in at running back. He flanks Joey Baum on the right side. 
Now four on the play clock, and Joey Baum cannot get it together out there with his offensive line, and he uses a timeout. Wise move for Case to take a timeout rather than run a busted play. That's their first timeout. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, and that could be a factor as we head down the home stretch. 9.06 to play in the fourth quarter. Coming up next week, University of Chicago at Stag Field. That'll be a 1 o'clock game. After that, the Spartans will be home for back-to-back -back UAA games to close out the regular season. Wash U here in a high noon affair on November the 6th, two weeks from today. And Carnegie Mellon on November the 13th in a 2 o'clock game here at Case Field. So Chicago, Wash U, and Carnegie Mellon coming up for Case once they get through with the Worcester Scots today. They have final non-conference game today, and they get into UAA. All four teams in the UAA over 500. Derek Bush spins, has the first down straight up the middle, gets down to the 21-yard line, picks up four, and the Spartans convert on third down with the senior out of Ford City High School in Katanning, PA, Derek Bush. Bush now getting close to the 50-yard mark. He has 13 carries today and 49 yards. High in the backfield now with Labarge. Bush is the tailback. Nicely in home at receiver on the right side. Baum will go back, hand it to Derek Bush. Looking to run behind Labarge. Nice block by the fullback, and Bush gets inside the 20. Down close to the 16. We'll see where they mark his knee down. Also a nice senior move by Derek Bush. Saw the block by Labarge, decided to cut up inside, inside the numbers, stay in bounds, rather than cut it to the outside and have the potential of getting pushed out of bounds. Case doing a nice job here on this drive of staying in between the numbers and letting that clock just roll against the Worcester Scots. Webster in nicely on the left. Homick on the right, matched up against Gerard Ogletree Crawford. Look for a possible shot at the end zone here with Homick. Baum looks left, goes middle of the field. It's caught by Derek Bush at the 10-yard line. Bush hit right there and knocked down. Seven-yard pickup and a first down for Case. Yeah, Bush got sandwiched on that play. He says he's okay. The Homick and, and Ganasco want him to come out of the ball game. And Bush says, no, I'm staying. He looked a little woozy as he got <laughs> up, kind of shifting from one foot to the other. He took a lick right there after making that catch. Bush, a very effective receiver out of the backfield. Far outside, Dave. It's one-on-one -on -one again. Trout and Homick lined up near the numbers on the far side of the field. That was Bush's 12th reception of the season. Baum under center goes to Derek Bush, gets down close to the five-yard line before he's cut down by Ogletree Crawford of Worcester. And the Spartans now right at the five-yard line of the Worcester Scots. Don't forget this drive started at the one-yard line, helped along by a roughing the kicker call. Second and goal from the five-yard line for Case, leading at 21 to 14. Seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter at Case Field. Baum goes back, fakes a handoff, rolls right, back of the end zone, nicely wide open. That's a touchdown. And a roughing the passer call coming against Worcester. Yeah, Rob Holtz will get the flag. Nicely makes the touchdown catch. He was wide open in the back of the end zone. His second touchdown of the day. Baum rolled right and found nicely wide open. And the four touchdown passes, a career high now for Joey Baum. He has 18 on the season, four day for the senior. It is a touchdown. Sam Coffey preparing for the PAT. He'll enforce that on the kickoff. Case will kick from the 45, which for sure will put Worcester in the end zone, and they'll have 80 yards in front of him. English will snap it. Scott will hold it. Here is the snap, the hold, the kick by Coffey. It is up, and it is good. 28-14 to 14 as the Spartans answer with a 99-yard scoring drive. 17 plays, 99, drive, or 99 yards. It used up 7 minutes and 10 seconds, completely deflating for the Worcester Scots. 
and it was helped by a roughing the kicker call that kept the drive alive, and then Worcester is going to get penalized on the kickoff for roughing the passer. So bookend penalties on the drive as the roughing the kicker called kept the ball in Case's hands on a fourth down on a punt that would have given Worcester the ball inside Case territory. And then the roughing the passer on Baum's touchdown toss to nicely Baum's fourth touchdown pass of the day. What a game for Joey Baum, 21 of 31 for 189 yards and four touchdowns. And no interceptions. Again, the case offense not committing any turnovers and not giving any life to the Worcester Scots. 6.50 to go in the football game and case back up by two touchdowns. Coffey will kick this one from the 45. With Coffey, that might go through the goalposts, and it does go out of the back of the end zone. I don't know if that split the uprights or not, but with a running start, Coffey kicks it well off the turf onto the track here at Case Field. I well, think that's a touchback. <laughs> well, what that penalty did was almost it, it guaranteed that Worcester was going to start at the 20-yard line. They had absolutely no opportunity for a return to set anything up. If they had a trick play in their, in their bag that they were thinking about using, no opportunity because of the penalty against Baum. Here come the Fighting Scots now, down by two. They have shown the ability to move the ball today. 28-14, Case leading it by 14 points. Richard Barnes, the freshman, getting an education here today. Drops back to throw on first down. Goes deep downfield, has a man open, and it is going to be incomplete. He hit Zach Wiedrich in the numbers, triple coverage. And in fact, Jordan McIntyre was close by as well, bringing another defender into the mix. But it's incomplete as they all went up for the ball at the same time. Now we talked about Case only having four offensive plays coming into uh, the fourth quarter. But since then, they have revived that. And with that 17-play drive, today they have a 10-play, 14-play, 5-play, and 17-play drives for touchdowns. 6.43 to go fourth quarter. Now Barnes pump fakes. Dale English almost had a blocked shot. Now English grabs him and sacks him. Dale English leaped up in the air as Barnes was getting ready to throw a pass and would have just knocked it down right back into Barnes' face. So Barnes kept the football. It ended up being a pump fake, and he tried to reverse direction back the other way, and English still got it. <laughs> just completely broke down, but you have to like the athleticism of Richard Barnes and what he's done. He's really been able to keep plays alive with his legs, and then his arm has allowed Case to, uh, or allowed Worcester to find some open seams with the Case defense. Third down and 20 after a 10-yard loss. Barnes near his own goal line. Now it's breaking down again. He's in trouble. He goes down as Rich Doolin records the sack for Case. Back-to-back -back sacks for the Spartans, Doolin and English. Well, with six defensive backs in the game, there's only so much that Barnes can expect out of his receiving core of four players. And eventually, in that situation, the front three are going to break through. They're going to get through their, their offensive blockers, and Barnes is going to have to throw it away or take the sack like he did there. Doolin with his seventh sack of the season. Here is the kick by Dana Oberry. A nice high punt and a fair catch called for and dropped by the Spartans, but they do recover it. Dan Calabrese had that ball go off his hands. And then it looked like Jake Adams recovered. Adams, the hero from the Allegheny game, recovers that loose ball for Case out at the 38-yard line, near disaster. Well, Calabrese tried to catch it in coverage, called for the fair catch, and it had a couple of Scots standing around him, and I think he just sensed them closing in, even if he wasn't going to get hit because of the fair catch. Ball went right through his hands, hit the turf, Bounce back up, and Adams fell on it for the Spartans. Well, and as we've learned in the Rochester game, a fair catch signal does not guarantee you won't be hit either. Joey Baum with the football. 
will hand it up the middle to Bill Deitman on his feet to the 30, down to the 25-yard line and tripped up right there, falls forward close to the 24. Uh, Rob Lajones came in at tight end. He came off the right side, came across the formation, and just sealed that corner. He gave a great block against Rob Holson. And uh, with that, Deitman ran right up underneath that and picked up 20 yards. Case has the two tight end set right now as they will try and keep this football on the ground and keep the clock moving. 4.43 to play here in the fourth quarter. 28 to 14. Case with a 14 point lead over the College of Worcester Fighting Scots. First and 10 from the 24 after Deitman picked up 14. They'll go back and hand to Bill Deitman again. Running straight ahead, takes a hit as Matt Breidegum comes in there and knocks Deitman down. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 coming up for Case. Now Lajones comes out. Coleman will stay on. You have Homick and Webster at wide out. Labarge checks in at fullback. Case taking their time here. 15 left on the play clock right now. Both teams have two timeouts. Now the best Worcester can hope for is to get the ball back with about two minutes to play. Joey Baum takes the snap. They will go back and hand it to Deitman. Running behind Labarge. Another nice block, but a nice ankle tackle by Eric Keyes, who has been all over the field today for Worcester. And he wipes out Bill Deitman before he could get to the hole created by Trevor Labarge. That's Key's 15th tackle on the afternoon. Seven solos for the senior. Third down and eight for Case. Case today, seven of 13. Worcester, seven of 16 on third down conversions. Both tight ends in the game on the left side now. Deitman is the lone setback. Webster and Holmick on the right side at wide receiver. Third down and eight for Joey Baum. They will go back, hand it to Bill Deitman, dives ahead. He'll be short of the first down, but Case may indeed go for it here. Third down, play, yields about three yards. Well, I think Case will take the full allotment that's left on the play clock, which is about 25 seconds, take it down to 2.15 or so, Call a timeout and might as well let Sam Coffey come on and try a chip shot yeah. field goal. Football will be marked on the 19-yard line, leaving it at fourth and four. Case right now getting the play clock down to eight and counting. Now down to four, three, and two, and there's your timeout. Case takes their second timeout. They will have one remaining. 2.17 to go here in the fourth quarter. This would be a 36-yard attempt for Sam Coffey. With the wind behind him. So you saw what Coffey did with a running start with the wind from the 45. He put the ball past the tackling dummies onto the track. So the wind helping Coffey. This 35 is probably more, more of a 30-yard 30, 30 field goal at the least, Dave. Sam Coffey on the season is 5 of 10. Well, the offense is coming back on the field. Yeah, they will uh, go for it here. Fourth down and five from the 19, figuring if they do not get it, Worcester will still be looking at over an 80-yard field in front of them. They have to do twice. And down by two scores. You're exactly right. Now Baum will fake to Bush. Dumps it off to Lajeunesse, the tight end, gets down to the 15, dives inside the 15, and looks to have the first down. I love that play. The tight end delay like that has been open all year long. Both tight ends, Coleman and Lajeunesse, do a great job of selling it with the inside block. They block down, release off on the naked bootleg from Baum, and they're standing wide open five, six yards downfield. They turn it up and do what they have to do. And, and Baum has options in that, too. He has the option to run the football if he wants to. And often there's a receiver downfield about 15 yards, and Case executes that play just perfectly. Rob Lajeunesse with his first catch of the year. Now Baum under center, Labarge and Bush. Yeah, he'll give it to Bush. Dives ahead to the 10. He is hit and dropped right there by the Worcester Scots. And in there first, down to the 9-yard line. Now for the looked fourth. like uh, Jeremy Pettit recorded the tackle there, Ed. 
Yeah, for the fourth consecutive season, it's going to be Case holding on to the Baird Brothers Trophy. And they've they won the last two years by 21 points. They won 28-7 two years ago here. And they won last year in the shootout. It ended up being a 21-point win for Case, but it was back and forth. Case exploded for 20 points or 22 points in the fourth quarter and pulled away in a night game down there, the first yep. ever night game at uh, Papp Stadium there in in Worcester. 53 and to 32 was the final. Zach Homick had two touchdowns and 119 yards receiving in that game. Dan Whalen threw for 396 yards. And Caldrick was also over 100 with the uh, almost on one play. Almost on one play. <laughs> Rob Lajeunesse made that catch a moment ago, his first catch of the season, a junior tight end out of Aurora High School where he played for Bob Mahalik. Big play on this drive. Second down and five for Case. Now Worcester has just one timeout remaining, 137 to play in the fourth quarter. Baum will hand it to Derek Bush, running past the 10, past the 9, down at the 8-yard line, tackled by Pettit once again, and Worcester will spend its final timeout. So Worcester expends its final timeout and trying every possible way to stay in this game, but with 129 left, down two touchdowns. Case has the football third and three at the Worcester seven-yard line. Things looking pretty bleak for the Fighting Scots. Case's Zach Homick today, nine catches for 100 yards, two touchdowns today. Sean Nicely, six catches. 49 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Derek Bush has run 17 times for 65 yards today. Bill Deitman, 13 carries and 40 yards. Joey Baum today, 22 of 32 for 194 yards and four touchdowns. And Ed, I cannot see any way after playing a tough Worcester team the way they have today, the case would not make their way into the top 25. Again, you know, that the, the win over over Allegheny, the win here over Worcester and a couple of solid programs, and they've continued to dominate Worcester now over the last four seasons. Uh, any loss should be get Case into the top 25. In fact, they were only one point out of the D3 top 25. They'll keep it on the ground with Derek Bush again. Worcester cannot stop the clock. Now Bill Deitman is seated on the bench behind the Case sideline with apparently some ice around his right ankle, which... Of course, he injured in week one when he had that prolific game against John Carroll. So hopefully that's just some preventative work on Deitman. Well, for Joey Baum, Davey threw for just Baum today, throwing for 194 yards, yards, which takes him just about 1750, 1760 on the season now. And that number actually will pass Dan Whalen. Whalen, who had, well, almost, Whalen had 1,779 yards as a freshman in 06, but he did pass Eli Grant's 2001 season of 1,606 yards, and next up would be Eli Grant with 1,849 yards as a senior. So Baum in some very good company, producing the kinds of seasons that top quarterbacks here at Case have done over the last 10 to 12 years. Well, and as uh, we heard Joey talk about on our halftime show last week, he's really interested in one thing, and... The stat he would point to you if this score holds is 7-0 and and keeping that streak alive. Case, by the way, did use a timeout. And they will send in Sam Coffey on fourth down and four now. And he will try a 25-yard field goal. This one will be held by Zach Scott at the 15. English will snap it. Scott will hold it. And Coffey will attempt his sixth field goal of the year with 43 seconds left in the football game. 28 to 14 case. English ready to snap it, there it is. Scott with the hold, the kick by Coffey, the senior is no good. They pulled it from the hash mark, could not angle it through the uprights, but game well in hand and it's just a formality now for Worcester to run out the clock. Coffey denied his sixth field goal of the year and he will come out to the sideline and Worcester will take over at the 20-yard line. Case will begin celebrating a win. A couple of areas of concern for Case, though. Tony Opperman missed most of the second half of the game with an ankle injury. 
Not sure of his status. And Bill Deitman on the sideline now. Deitman did not appear to suffer an injury in the game, so perhaps just uh, coming over to the sideline, getting an early start on some treatment on that ankle. Barnes over the middle of the field. Pass is caught by Reddick. He hands the football off to Zach Wiedrich, who is then quickly tackled. They pick up about nine on the play. Almost started to run the old hook and ladder. 20 seconds left. They cannot stop the clock. Case up by two touchdowns. Barnes ready to throw it. Goes over the middle again to Reddick. Makes the catch. Dives ahead to the 41-yard line. Well, first down, stop the clock. Worcester will line up. They'll place the ball. 9.4 seconds left. Reddick makes the catch. He has been held in check today. That's his sixth grab of the day. Now they'll go to Barnes. He will drop back. Now he'll be knocked down, but he stays on his feet, and he'll gun it deep downfield. This will be the last play of the game. Looking for Reddick. It's out of bounds incomplete, and it's a final. Case wins it today by a score of 28-14 to 14 over the College of Worcester fighting Scott.